Hey everyone, this is Noel with creationeffects.com and you're watching the tutorial for doing the data mosh effect in Adobe After Effects uh, using the creation glitch effects template from Creation Effects. Uh, data moshing or data bending, it's a video glitch that looks so cool that it's actually been used intentionally in many mainstream music videos and elsewhere. And I know a lot of people have tried to make the effect in After Effects and to my knowledge it's never been faked before. Uh, in After Effects or in any software. It's just too complex. Well, after many attempts, I finally did it, and uh, it, it's not perfect, but I think it does a pretty good job of recreating that look. And it's a transition effect, essentially. So the whole idea behind it is you've got two shots, and rather than the first shot cutting to the second shot, what happens is the first shot plays and then freezes and then whatever object is moving in the second shot grabs the pixels from the first shot and kind of takes them with it. So you can see the pixels in the first shot get displaced and kind of morph into the second shot. And there's some other stuff going on here as well. Like you usually see these little blocks of black pixels or oversaturated pixels that follow the motion in the shot. So I feel like I should share that this effect has been mocking me for literally years now. I, I first tried it like three years ago when I made a collection of video glitch effects for uh, After Effects and I failed. Uh, but then every time that I would see the real thing I'd think, yeah, I should be able to do that. So since then I've tried it about 10 times and I could just never figure out a way to do it. Well, for the last few months I've been creating another improved glitch effects template for After Effects. So I gave it another shot and I finally figured it out. Uh, the key is in the displacement map effect and motion tracking. So I'm going to show you how to do it now with your own footage in just a few steps. And once you understand how it works, it should just take a couple of minutes for you to set up the effect. As I said, this effect is part of a much larger collection of video glitch effects called Creation Glitch Effects. And you can find that at creationeffects.com. So you do need the template to do uh, this effect. Alright, I'm going to try to speed through this, so let's get started. The uh, data mosh effect can be found in the transitions folder here. It's not an effect that you can apply to a minute of your footage. It's just a four second transition effect. There is, however, this data moshing preset, which combines five data mosh transitions in a row. Uh, once you learn how to do this one, you'll know how to do this one, so I'll just start here. I'm going to open the data mosh folder and the pre comps folder and then open this your footage comp and I'll delete the default layer and I'll bring in my two shots. So I want to make a transition from this elephant walking to this shot of a baby. Uh, you, have, you have to have some kind of motion in your second shot to get the full effect. So we have some subtle camera motion in the shot and the baby is moving a little bit as well. And I also like this shot because there's some contrast between the main subject and the background. Any shot will work, but uh, shots with a bright foreground and dark background or vice versa, those look the best in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to make my edit here and you can see there's a, a marker here at the five second mark and that's where I'll put the cut and I'll make sure there's some movement right as the uh, second shot starts. Okay, I'm done with this comp, so I'll open the data mosh comp now. And if you wanted, you could just preview this and use it as it is. It already has some motion tracking data there by default, and you could have an interesting effect here, but if you want it to look more authentic and have it work better with your footage, there are three steps to do and then you can render it out. Uh, first we need to prepare our mats. So there's three or four mats here and they're all the same. They're just high contrast copies of our footage. And I'll turn on one of them like black pixels mat or uh, footage with displacement map and I'll isolate it. And then I'll go up to my control layer at the top and in my effect controls panel I'm going to play with a threshold slider. And my goal is to make the subject mostly white and the background mostly dark. 
and you can't always do this with all footage and that's okay. Uh, your effect will just work a little differently. So if you need, you can turn on or off the invert mat to uh, make your subject white. And by subject, I mean the main thing that's moving in your footage. So in this case, the baby. All you need to know uh, is whatever is white, those are the areas that are going to be grabbing pixels from the first shot in your cut and moving them around as the, the baby moves. So that's okay. I'll hide my mats again. Uh, next, I have to do a little bit of motion tracking. If you haven't done that before, it's not that hard. I've already got it all set up for you. Just open the layer panel for this layer, your footage motion tracked. So double click that, or you may need to alt or option click it. And then your footage should open up in a new panel. You should see a tracking box over your footage. And uh, if your tracker controls aren't showing, go up to your window menu and click tracker controls. And then you want to go to the five second mark where this composition marker is and move your track point over a detail in your subject. So this should be an area of high contrast. So I'll put it on the corner of her eye here. And the pixels in this inner box are the pixels that will be tracked. So uh, don't make it bigger than it needs to be. And you can think of this outer box as a search area. So with every frame, After Effects will search this whole area for this group of pixels. So the search area should be bigger. And uh, if your footage has some fast motion on it, it's going to need to be really big. Uh, I'll try it like this. And then starting at the five second mark, I'll click the play button in my tracker controls. And I'll let it track until it gets to nine or 10 seconds and then stop it. And don't worry too much about this step. Your track point may get off track and stop following your point. So you can pause it, reposition your box, and uh, make it bigger or smaller if you need to, and then just keep playing. And if it jumps out of place once or twice, it's not that big a deal. Anyway, as that played, it, it created motion tracking data on this layer in the form of these keyframes, which is what we wanted. So now our final step is optional. But if you want, you can customize how much you see of this craziness here. So we have all of these black pixels and highly saturated pixels. And we have some normal pixels as well. So the normal ones are just the, your footage without any effects. And uh, you can change how much of all of these pixels are visible on the control layer with these slider controls. Uh, or you can just go with the default settings. And you can see if I reveal the keyframes on this control layer, the normal pixels increase in stages every second or so until about nine seconds when they just completely take over. So at, at this point, your footage just looks normal. So you can shorten or extend the duration of the effect that way. And you can play with these other controls if you want. In all of the samples that you saw in this video and uh, the demo, I just left these alone and went with the default settings. So uh, your work is done, but uh, just to make your life even more complicated, I have three options uh, for you to export. And it's really just a matter of personal preference. I, I couldn't really decide which way looks best, so I'm giving you the option. Uh, you can preview this comp as it is, and if you like it, great, uh, export it. But you can also go down to this layer, uh, Footage with Displacement, and choose No Track Mat in the uh, Track Mat drop-down menu. And that'll make it so your background pixels also move, but in the opposite way that your subject moves. Um, so it's just it's just a different look. And also, if you want the most authentic data mosh effect, uh, leave that track mat to say Luma Mat, and then open this comp here, Data Mosh with Echo, and give that a preview. Uh, this one leaves a trail of echoed pixels behind everything that moves like you would usually see in real data moshing. And the catch is, with every frame, there are more echoes to process, so it just gets slower and slower. So just to warn you, you should RAM preview this comp in quarter resolution. Uh, so you can set that here. And then if you're exporting it, give yourself a couple hours uh, to render it all since it's full HD. OK, that's the data mosh effect. And really quick, I'll show you the data moshing preset. It's all the same stuff, uh, just more of it. I'm not going to go through the whole process. I'll just give you a quick rundown. Um, I'll open up the Your Footage Comp. And if I zoom in, 
you'll see five of these transition markers now. So you can have up to six shots here and just make them each cut to the next at these markers like I showed you before. And then you're going to need 10 minutes or so uh, just to follow the steps that I showed you for each of these five Datamosh effects. So just open up each folder and open the Datamosh comp and then adjust your mat layer, do your motion tracking starting at the five second mark and then go to your next folder and do the same thing. And when you're done, your final comp is this one here or this one if you have all night to render and you want, it, you want that uh, echo effect. Uh, okay, that's everything I have to show you. Have fun with the data mosh effect and I will glitch you later. And I'm sorry for that one.